This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 101. Welcome to Comic Geek Speak. I'm Brian Deemer. I'm Kevin Moyer. I'm Jamie D. I'm Peter Rios. Easy, miss. I've got you. You, you've got me. Who's got you? <laughs> and welcome to the show. As often as I hear that, I still get chills. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Comic Geek Speak is sponsored by two longtime listeners of the show. Brad Milo and Frank Rincon. Edit this and Mr. Flashlight on the forum, respectively. Ever wanted to be a CGS fan? Well, now you can be with the new Mr. Flashlight and Edit This action figures. At 12 inches high, the exciting Mr. Flashlight figure features Frank in a top hat and tuxedo. Mr. Flashlight also has multiple points of articulation, so you can pose Frank in many exciting poses, such as standing up straight. Accessories include a power cup of coffee and the super couch. With the Mr. Flashlight action figure, you can relive many of his exciting adventures, such as the time Frank sat on the couch and watched TV for 18 hours in a row, or the time he drank coffee while standing straight up. At an impressive 7.5 inches, the Edit This figure comes with action bills, an email inbox filled with messages from his nagging ex-wife, and a special patented flex joint at the waist so you can stretch Brad's lower back. Reenact a moment in CGS episode 74 when Brian and crew called Brad and caught him in the restroom with the 1 16th scale die cast replica toilet included as a special bonus. Visit your local comic book store and tell the salesperson, Hey jerk, I want my Mr. Flashlight and edit this action figures now. You are guaranteed to love them. Guaranteed not valid in New Jersey and Iraq. Do not taunt the edit this action figure. The Mr. Flashlight figure is not guaranteed to love you back. <laughs> Thank you, Brad and Frank. That awesome. <laughs> you know, that, that whole standing up action, that, that puts him ahead of the, D, the D, DC Direct <laughs> figures by, you know, <laughs> leaps and bounds. Yeah, because they, they don't stand straight up. Until that's my Dr. Fate figure. <laughs> yeah, I know, with the one foot, that, with the one leg that's <laughs> longer than the, the other. other. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You pay $15 for that. It's for goddamn ridiculous. Oh, okay. Uh... This month's book of the month is Wanted by Mark Miller and J.G. Jones. Yeah. A- and, huh? No, go ahead. I, I, I just wanted to say something about that because I realized we really didn't say, because I know we got some flack for picking uh, Animal Man because it was Vertigo, and some parents and some kids were like, oh, I can't, I can't read it. I will put a warning on it. This is definitely an adult book, not... I'm not talking X-rated adult. I'm talking adult as in mature, mature yeah. books. So, parents, you know, be, ca- be be caution that it is an adult book. I was looking through it when we got home last night, and uh, I just want to definitely put that tag. Yeah, on. they already started threading the forum, and yeah, <laughs> it's already like two pages worth of posts about it. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and then if you want, you can get it at from InStockTrades.com for forty percent off, and. Um, our contest, Peter? Hey, this uh, February's contest is the Scavenger Hunt. Uh, by the time you hear this, there will be on the contest page 25, quote-unquote, items that you had, have to get from 25 different episodes. Certain items, you need to give me certain things like a time stamp or which, uh, you, for all of them, you need to tell me which episode it's from. Sometimes you have to tell me which question it is and some other little odds and ends. Uh, you obviously can't repeat two items from the same episode. They have to be one from episodes uh, 76 through 100. Your prize, and this is going to run the entire month of February, so it's not a first-come, first-serve. It's just at the end of the month, whoever has the most correct uh, obviously will win the huge grand prize. If there's more than two entries, that uh, one entry that has um, the same items, has everything on it, we'll just pull them in a hat and and pick it out. Uh, there's only one grand prize. We're not going to do a second, third prize, especially because for January's contests, we ran two of them, and there's a lot of prizes that we have to ship out. So we're gonna just, just going to make this one grand prize. The prizes are a guest spot on the show, uh, an oversight... Excuse me? Priceless. Priceless, <laughs> yeah. And that's for the entire episode. Um, 
you will get an oversized soft covered modesty blaze trade from uh, which was made possible from Titan Books. You're going to get a, an original Wonder Woman page from Steve Bryant, the artist on Athena Voltaire, and we're going to I'm going to throw in some thing a little more you know little extra things along the month. Uh, one of them is going to be like the Mirror Mask movie soundtrack CD, and I'll have a few more announcements as we go. So I'm going to sweeten the pot so that you wait, guys... Wait till they see that drawing. Oh, yeah. that And that drawing will be on the contest page as, as well. We'll show it in a little picture so you can see it. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that's a scavenger hunt. Uh, get cracking. Uh, Steve, uh, on the forum, put uh, like the first five pages or something from Athena Voltaire number one, and man, it looks good. And it was also on Diamond's list for for this week, for yeah for this what is today's quote unquote Thursday. So yesterday. <laughs> yeah. February first. Um uh we got an email from Gene Colin. He wanted to let everyone know that he is now accepting commissions again. because uh, when we did the interview with him he was all booked up. Uh but now He's got some openings, so if you're interested in a Gene Colon original piece of artwork, you can go to his website and check it out. It's just genecolon.com, right? I think so. If you Google Gene Colon, it comes right up. Or check out the show notes. We'll, we'll put it in there. Okay. Um, also, speaking of contests, um, comicbookdb.com uh, has a contest. And uh, we got a phone call, a voicemail from uh, Melka Lauren uh, on the forum who uh, runs Comic Book DB, and he's going to tell us all about uh, their contest. Gentlemen, this is uh, Chris Seifert, also known as Melka Lauren on the CGS forum. I created and run ComicBookDB.com, which was actually born in the CGS forums, and you guys have been great in supporting, which I definitely appreciate. Uh, it's been about five months since the project started, and we're averaging roughly five to 6,000 issue submissions per month, so things are going very well. And uh, to help increase how useful the site is, I've decided to run a contest for the month of February. Our sponsor, In Stock Trade, is generously giving the winner of the contest $100 in store credit, and uh, it's, how do you win is pretty simple. Uh, the person who adds the most issue or story synopses to the database wins. Simple as that. Uh, now that we are, there are uh, several qualifications that have to be met, but I'm not going to go into those. Uh, it's just a matter of making sure that they're all good entries. You know, they're not stolen from another site, and they're not 100 issues of the Hulk where the description is, Banner gets mad, Hulk's out, smashes everything in sight. I don't need to see that. But uh, uh, we're getting pretty excited about this contest that's coming up, and uh, we're hoping that it brings a lot of traffic to the site and makes the, the entries in the site more than just a list of who, has contri- who, who is the writer and the artist and whatnot on the site. So uh, thank you for letting me announce this on the show, and uh, thanks for your ongoing support. We really appreciate it. Uh, have a great show, guys. Bye. All right. So one more chance to get $100 worth of stuff from in-stock trades. Got like that. And if you haven't been to that site yet, uh, it's very cool. It's, uh, just cataloging every comic book known to man eventually. So. And you get five to 6,000 entries a month. On the, yeah. way, the way that thing's growing, it's amazing how intense and how detailed everything is. And I know, and it, it's the way everything links back now. I love that additions of the trade paperbacks being listing. Uh, it's just the whole thing is awesome. I get uh, lost on there. Yeah, I mean, they, they put the uh, the latest entries on our little banner at the top of our forum, yeah. and, you know, no matter when I go on there, there's new, there's new oh, you know, constantly. comics on there all the time. Well, they're, they average about 200 comics a day. So if you divide the number of hours in a day and then figure... <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, it's it's a, like a new comic every couple minutes is is getting added, so it's awesome. <laughs> Good for him. All right, let's see if we have some email to look at. 
Nothing like dead air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To get something. We're just making the episode I'll longer. Just sing song. a little bit. <laughs> la 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 la. Um, before I talk about email, I I wanted to um. I wrote down in my notes. If you uh, haven't checked it out, um, you should check out on our forum. We have a thread about the fan art challenge, which is just kind of like a a continuous thread about of any fans with artistic ability or drawing things. And there's usually like a topic of the week to draw or whatever. And um, there's some really awesome stuff. You don't have to be a member of the forum to to look at it. You can just browse without signing up. So if you don't want to sign up, that's fine. You can still look. And uh, the Seraphin, uh, got one of the artists who participates on the forum, uh, suggested for the, the topic of the week, I, I think it was late last week or something, that you should draw... There's not Welcome even dogs. anybody here. <sighs> they should draw um, a picture of the new Spider-Man costume in an attempt to make it look cool. Was they? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Jay Stevens already drawn one that looks really, really nice. Yeah, it does look and, good. Uh, and so the, some of the guys who participate have asked me to publicize it a little more and try to get some more activity on there. It's a great thread. Was, was that the, the picture with, like, the CGS logo in the background? With yeah, with that? the webs okay. all over it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, thought it looked, I thought the costume looked different, but I wasn't sure if, that, you know, if that's what he was doing or not. And then somebody drew uh, <clears throat> Galactus holding Moon Knight as his herald uh, based on what Charlie Houston had, was joking around about and. Uh, <laughs> So there's a lot of really great artwork on there, and uh, if you're not at least looking at the at that thread, you're missing out. Yeah. How about the uh, the new news segment of our portion of our website? Spill the beans, baby. <clears throat> um, to replace the blog, the old blog, the old missed blog, we're gonna we created a uh, a link on our forum. I mean, excuse me, not on our forum, on our website. For those of you who do not like to go to forums. It's going to be called just news. So when you go to the website, you'll see, you know, swag and form and news, all these different links. The news uh, section will be obviously news about Comic Geek Speak. Um, some f- interest. If we get some press releases from certain companies that we feel should be passed on to you guys, and we may, you know, we don't want to take up form space, or or maybe we'll mention it on the show and tell you to go to the news section. You can go there. Um, I know that. The one thing we are going to do, I think we've talked. Have we talked about this on the show about the convention T-shirt? We've talked about it at least once. Yeah, but twice, I don't right? know that we not really. We didn't, yeah, we didn't make an really official gotten, announcement, right? Yeah, like, we didn't. I don't think we made official announcement, did we? I don't know, not that I know of. Yeah. Well, I guess we can make it now then. <laughs> well, yeah. make it, baby, make it. <laughs> da, 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 what you talking about? Da, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this will probably be the first thing on on the news link, uh, but uh, we have we're going to have exclusive only to conventions a convention slash concert style t-shirt that Kevin has been working on. Uh, actually, it's done. Um, the design of it is done. And um, they will be the low, low price of $15, but you can only get them at conventions. That's the, that's the beauty of it, if you want to say. It's a variant shirt in a way. And it's a double-sided shirt double for 15 bucks. Yeah, yes. uh, we'll post the image up under the news section, so you can go check it out. Um, We've been taking like preliminary orders for the New York Comic Con on the forum. Well, for we all, will, all for all cons. I mean, it's not cons, right. really an order. I mean, it's people who, if they think they want to pick one up, they right. just say, "Hey, yeah, I'll probably pick one up, and this is the size that I take." Just so we can kind of gauge some how many. Yeah. You know, you're not under any commitment to do that. If you change right. your mind, you don't go to the show. It doesn't matter. There's no credit cards, no nothing. You just say, "I wear a medium. I'll probably buy one." That's yeah. all. You could look at it and go, "No." Nah, yeah. Hopefully you will. Hopefully you will get it. And then we hunt you down and we make you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a cool. It has all the the uh, conventions we're going to. Hopefully, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least one of us at at, at, at all of these conventions. Yeah. And it's just another fun kind of fun thing to do. So check out the news section. News. Do, 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 do. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got an email from Steve. Noppenberger of Angry Dog Press. He says, Dear Comic Geeks, while listening to your podcast number 95, uh, if a self-publisher can sell 2,000 copies per month uh, and 
and they have a one to four man team, they will make money. You based your print run based on Diamond PO. So if Diamond PO is 800 or greater, then printing cost is covered. If they're getting a PO for 2,000 plus, they are more than likely printing 5,000 copies and selling those via conventions and mail order and still pay artists and other contributors. So a small press publisher who sells 2,000 to 5,000 copies per month will make a living selling comics. Even a publisher who only publishes once a year uh, could sell 10,000 units and pull it off if the trade paperback is priced right. Uh, trade paperback at 10.99 sells to Diamond for $4.39 times 10,000 equals $43,960. Uh, if printing cost is half, do the math. So I guess, you know, we were saying, like, how can anyone stay in business at, you know, 2,500 copies or whatever? And I guess that's how. If they're not, you know, paying benefits and, you know, all that stuff, they can do it. I mean, it depends on how many, you know, there's so many factors that are variable as far as how many people are have their hands on, you know, the book. Exactly. Uh, you know, and if you're truly, quality, if you're writing and drawing the book yourself, then definitely yeah. you could make a go of it, I suppose. You know, the quality of the paper, if it's color, you know, there's so many variables. You know what, to go along with that, um, we're going to bring back the Indie Challenge for February. We we kind of, it was neglected, which was mostly my fault, for January. So we brought, we're going to bring it back. This is um, – if you're a customer of DCBS, the idea is that we spotlight at least four uh, indie books that we feel should you know, just get a push. And Cameron at DCBS has gone out of his way. Normally, they're 30% off discounted price. <clears throat> For these four selections, they're going to be 45% discounted, which is huge uh, – um, because Cameron is, is, you know, this is basically he's he's allowing them to be sold at cost to him, which means he's not making Make money out of this, right? So he's really behind all this, and, and he's really excited. Um, so I, I wanted, so him and I, we we went back and forth, and we picked some out. Um, the first one, and if you have your February previews, uh, February two thousand six with the Mike Turner Wolverine cover. On page 207 from Ad House Books, Superior Showcase Number 1 by Nick Bertozzi, Mike Dawson, and Dean Tripp. And I'll read the, the little blurb here. This fantastic first issue of the comic that is all about heroes that are super contains the uber talents of Bertozzi, Dawson, and Tripp. Ignat's award-winning Bertozzi, Bertozzi visits the supermarket. Ad, ha- Ad House uh, alum Dawson gives us one of the final tales of Ace Face, and Web Boy Trip shows us the powers of a butterfly. So it's just kind of uh, like a preliminary. When I look at the cover, it's kind of like Mike Allridge-ish kind of artwork. And you know, if you're, if you're, I don't know much more about the interior, but the cover kind of grabbed us. On page two ten from Alias is uh, Super Teen Topia, number one, by Kirk Cushion and Gonzalo Martinez. In the tradition of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Freaks and Geeks and Sixteen Candles comes a new ongoing series from Alias. While A-list teen superheroes travel to other dimensions and fight cosmic overlords, the super teen uh, Topia gang gets stuck at the mall waiting for a bus. In this issue, Paige, Cameron, and Kevin meet for the first time as they respond to a crisis with their untested powers. If you're ready for a comic series that focuses more on character than it does costume, this is uh, the comic for you. They call it the Super Soap, brand new Super Soap in town. So that was the next one. On page 218, the next two are actually, um, they're fans of the show. They're listeners of the show. They posted their work on the forum. Uh, so we quick emailed them and said, hey, what can we do to help you guys uh, support, so, so we can help support you guys? And we thought this was the perfect way. On page 218, Ape Entertainment, uh, Horrorwood by Brandon Terrell and Brent Schoonover. After an odd confrontation with a cryptic magician, actress Sophia St. Clair is thrust into an adventure involving her father, the reclusive special effects artist Pierce Jackson, a stuntman named Bruno, and a cult led by a maniacal man known only as the Father. When the cult attacks a carnival sideshow, Sophia and Bruno come across a startling discovery. And it does say mature themes. Um, So... 
they said if you're a fan of like the old Vincent Price type Hollywood horror kind of movies, this is kind of what that genre is about. And there is a thread on our forum that has a few sample pages. So yep. And the last one is on page two ninety eight. As I go to that, <clears throat> and it is called Werewolves Call of the Wild, and you can also see some uh, images on or other. I think Mike uh, posted on a forum, and he has like a link to a site and things like that. So it's Moonstone. It's uh, by Mike Oliveri and Joe Bucco. And the uh, synopsis for this, if you're going to kill a man, you, be- you best make sure his brother won't come looking for him, especially if that man's brother is a werewolf. Cole Tyler fears the worst when he learns his missing brother is the subject of a murder investigation by a hostile sheriff. Sheriff Hess, meanwhile, wants to know why Marcus Rice... Wants Cole to join his brother in a shallow grave. Also, this also says mature themes. So, those four titles can be yours for forty-five percent off at DCBS. Really, really, really. If you if if you love your indie books and you and you believe in supporting the small guy, this is the best way you can do it for these four titles for this month. The idea is that you know if you get them, you read them, and you enjoy them, that you stick with them for the later months. Some of our past indie challenges have been Athena Voltaire and Mouse Guard and Atomica. Um, so hopefully you're, you know, that you're, hopefully you're sticking with them throughout the month. So th- like that email just said, you know, what, is it, what did he say? It would only take 2,000 comics for him to make some money. You know, if we, can get, if we can help him get some kind of boost on some of those four books, that would be really, really awesome. So I know I added them to my list. And we want you to do the same. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to lose when you get it at 45 percent off. Exactly. And some of them are, are priced at uh, 399, 299. So you're looking at some pretty inexpensive comics to try out. You know, to try something new. That's you can't ask for more. So thank you, Cameron and DCBS. Um, so will you be posting that on them so people can? Yeah. I'll post it on the form. Mm-hmm. That way, you know, they can pull right that up. Or on the exactly news what section. Or on the news section. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now that the new order forms will be coming out this week and people can start doing their orders, they can pull that up right away. Yeah. I think if you're not sure, I'm pretty sure if you go into the product spotlight under the DCBS, you'll also find them there. Oh, okay. Cool. Excellent. Um, we have one, uh, another uh, email here. Uh, This one's from Steve Atkins. He says, Hey, guys, I am really enjoying your show, especially the interview portions with comic legends. I was wondering how you feel about retro-style comics, such as Images Big Bang Comics or the Golden Age series or the Final Frontier, etc., etc. Is anybody reading any of those kind of comics? No. I I have read them. Uh, Big Bang sounds familiar. yeah, Yeah, Image put that up for a little bit. It was... Like the Night Watchman, and um, I'm trying to think of some of the other. Obviously, Batman and wasn't Ultraman that, or something like that. 1963. Is that part of it? Or no, not? that wasn't part of it. I read but, 1963. Yeah, but that's that's along the same lines. I think is what he's what he's saying. Also, I'd put like Godland in there right now with you know very Kirby esque. Um, yeah, I, mean, I I like them. I'd much rather read the older stuff. Personally, I mean, I, I know some of the some of the guys that I know that like that older stuff also have read those and support those, but I'd much rather pick up a copy of Green Llama and, and read that as opposed to reading The Night Watchman or Ultraman or whatever you know, these were. Hmm. I read 1963 when that came out. And that yeah, was that, Alan Moore. Oh, yeah. yeah, I read that. And, uh, well, I mean, we've all read Golden Age, if you count that. Then you can Hello, it. Emily. Hi. Hello, welcome to the show. Thanks. <laughs> With me here is Kevin, Jamie, and Peter. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hey, how Hello. you doing? Good. How are you uh, doing? Great. For the listeners out there, um, Emily is part of the Frag Dolls. Yeah, that's right. And uh, they are, I'll just read out the little blurb that I got off the uh, website. Okay. Um, okay, boys, the days of cooties have gone the way of centipede. Girls are into <laughs> games now, and we're just as hooked as you are. In fact, girl gamers make up 43% of all gamers. So where are all the ladies in the house? Enter the Frag Dolls, a group of girl gamers out to have a little fun. We're here to represent the ladies in gaming with the taste and talent for beating you at your own games. So for all you guys who think the only gals in gaming are the leather-clad, pixelated beauties on your screens, think again. We're real, and we've got the skills to teach you a few tricks of our own. 
So hang around and check out our blogs or, or come challenge us online. You just might learn something. So we saw uh, the article in the, the in the Wizard magazine, yeah, one seventy. Uh huh. And I've never heard I've never heard of that. I've, Kevin, you said you have. Yeah, I've heard I've heard of. Uh, yeah, you have rag dolls with the. Uh, you have gone out to different shows and such, and has set up uh, and had on you know on site challenges. Yeah, we usually have some sort of like four on four challenge set up, and then people just come by, sit down, and just play us, and we just take on anybody. Where um, where mostly do you guys uh, do this at? Is there a specific places that you go each year, or is it does it vary every year? Um, well, we've only been around since last August, so in the past year we've done a few conventions, like you know E3 is a big one, and then we started out at PAX, which is the Penny Arcade Expo. Um, we went to like IGN Live. Uh, we've done like we went to even to Montreal, Canada, to do um, a big Arcadia gaming festival thing. Um, just a lot of we did MLG, so we've been to all the MLGs this year. That, that's major league gaming, and uh, just kind of whatever comes up. So there's been so many new you know conventions coming up that you know there's no like set that we go to schedule that you can you know kind of fit into other conventions as well and just uh, develop your roster as you go along. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Any any comic conventions on the on the list? Um, I think actually two of the girls went to the San Diego Comic Con, but it wasn't. It was like before Fragdolls came up, so they were just there as like kind of to demo and showcase some games, I guess. But cool. I would love to go to San Diego Comic Con. I mean, I go anyways, but I've never gone like as a Fragdoll. So. So you're a comic fan? Yeah, I'm totally a comic fan. That's why I think um, the our PR guy set you guys up with me because I used to collect comics and stuff, and so like when. I didn't even know that wizard thing came out until someone told me, and I was like, no way, we're in wizard. I was, like, <laughs> so excited, like, because I used to subscribe to wizard. Like, I mean, I collected, like, back in the days when, like, Jim Lee and Image just came out, and I guess that was around the time, like, Superman, you know, died, and Batman broke his back. So I collected around that time. And then, so when I heard we were in wizard, I was, like, so excited. That was, like, the biggest, I was like, oh, my God, I've made it. I'm in wizard. But it wasn't even an interview with me. It was, like, with the other girls. So I was, I was just still excited we were in there. It's cool. Uh, what about, uh, are you reading anything currently? No, actually, I went to the comic store, like, when that issue came out, and then I ended up buying, like, a lot of comics, because I'm so, like, out of date. But I used to just collect, like, pretty much Jim Lee's, like, you know, my hero. So I collected, like, anything he came out with, and, like, J. Scott Campbell I really liked. So just anything that, like, really caught my eye. I guess I was more into, like, the comic artwork, so that's really why I started collecting but I'm always like, oh, what's Jim Lee doing? What's Jim Lee doing? So, what is Jim Lee, do- Jim Lee doing right now? Um, All Star Batman. All Star Batman. Star Batman. Yeah, besides Batman. Yeah. Yeah, you want to say? <laughs> from, from what I hear, you want to stay, stay away from that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Although he's bringing back uh, his Wildcats with right. Grant Morrison, he'll be doing the artwork on that. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a couple months probably. Yeah, that's uh-huh. later in the year. We'll probably start hearing some announcements on that soon. Um, so, what's been your experience? Uh, as a frag doll and and playing some of the some of the guys out on the road. Mm, well, it's definitely been really fun. Like I'm surprised that we can actually beat majority of the people out there. Besides, like like MLG is a totally different. They're like a professional circuit. But I mean, when we sit down and we just play like regular spectators. Oh, can you hold on a second? <laughs> I think the gauntlet's being thrown. Yeah. Hi, hello. <laughs> hello. Oh. I'm sorry, this uh, room is being used. I'm, like, at work trying to use a, a landline. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Is it possible I can call back? Uh, sure. Sure. Okay, sorry about that. No problem. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's funny. Like, totally. I'm not surprised that they, no, you no, know, no. if my nine-year-old brother at the time when all those games could beat me, why, why should I care if it's a guy or girl? Well, I, it's just the mentality that people just don't think that... Espe- chicks, well, especially hot chicks, are playing play games. Video games. And Lynn loves yeah. to play video games, and Jess loves to play video games. I mean, exactly. You know. Yeah. It's just a, it's like a mental block thing, you know? It just Again, they, it's like comics as yeah. kids, you know? It's right. like, they can't possibly be good. They're girls. Yes. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't, know, I don't believe that. Bam, right yeah. the Jimmy's. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's kind of cool, actually. And I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, in, it's something different. That uh, you know, and I look, I look forward to seeing them if they come out to some of the shows this year. I'm hoping that 
you know, they might get in with Wizard. Maybe they can come to the Wizard cons this year as well as San Diego. And, yeah. you know, they always have video game setups and stuff like that. Good games. Lord, San Diego, that was, you know. Big time. One quarter of that entire convention was nothing but video games. So that's and the entire Marvel, the entire Marvel Activision booth was Activision booth. Yeah. She has down here her favorite games are Halo, Halo 2, Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Uh, wow, Warcraft 3, Resident Evil 4, God of War, Final Fantasy 7 and 9, uh, Top Spin, Black and White, The Sims, and some of her old school games like 007, Mario Kart 64. Is that what we were playing the other night? No, that's Mario Kart Double Dash for uh, GameCube. Nintendo GameCube, yeah. That was for the Nintendo 64 system. Mario Tennis, Super Mario Brothers 2 and 3, Bubble Bubble Bobble. Oh, that's a good game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that game. That's an old Nintendo game. Dr. Mario, Tetris Attack, Mappy, and Burger Time. Damn, she's got a lot of my favorite nice games on there. Yeah, Burger Time. Oh, yeah. Lord. <laughs> Burger Time's step, a big... Step back into that's like, my childhood. That's like crack back in the day. Oh, Burger Time. A lot of Burger Time. <laughs> Is that pepper, the... pepper, 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 pepper. <laughs> Are you the chef going around making the burger? Yeah. 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 You're running across the burger and dropping it down? down. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, the little hot dogs or whatever are coming for you and stuff. The little, the little, wasn't there a fried egg? Wasn't there a fried oh, egg yeah, coming yeah, after yeah. you, too? It's amazing. It was just <laughs> one of those things that you'd, you know, you'd sit there in concept, you'd think about it. It probably would never, uh, you know, <laughs> never come to fruition, but it ends up being, like, one of the biggest played games, you know, at the time. Know. Burger time. <laughs> She's got a lot of good games there. It's like a lot of the ones that are my favorite games, too. I love all the Splinter Cell games and the Halo games. We're, they're talking on the forum about starting a CGS clan. Yeah, we got to hit that. Or whatever. I picked up my Xbox. I got my wireless router and my and my uh, receiver and such. And uh, I was going to pick up my Xbox Live, the 12 month subscription, but it had the Project Gotham racing game in it, and I wasn't a big fan of racing games. So they had the other one with Crimson Skies, and I was, so I wanted to get that one. But um, the place at Best Buy didn't have that one, so then I ended up going to Circuit City, and they finally had one. But then after investigating it further, that that one it would not be Xbox 360 compatible. So if I would have bought that one, the headset wouldn't have been compatible if I were to get an Xbox down the line. So I was like, well, i got to do that one. Hi, sorry. No problem. Welcome back. Hi. You guys said not to call from a cell phone, so I'm trying to just find some available phone <laughs> with my desk. We just have this image of you popping around this building trying to find phones. Or <laughs> I know. I was like <laughs> popping in a conference room like, oh, is anyone here? But Just tell them you're talking to CGS and it's more oh, right. That just cover it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> On your bio, you, you have, we, we just read all your favorite games and uh, uh, they were talking about, Kevin and Brian were talking about Burger Time and some of the old Intellivision games. Oh yeah, no one knows what the Intellivision is. I'm oh my like, god, yeah. We still, I still have an Intellivision. You do? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I have all my systems ever since, I mean the first system I ever owned was the Atari 2600. Yep, still have that one. And I, and I still have that and uh, the Intellivision uh, my Sega Genesis, the the 32X, and the Sega CD, and wow, that's pretty cool. You know, I mean, I, I and and I just keep going. I, I don't get rid of them because there's just no, cool games on them that I'd still like to play. So yeah, I don't know who got rid of mine. So I only have my Nintendo, my NES. That's my oldest one. Why? And then why, I kept all the ones after that. Excuse me, sorry. Why? Why the uh, favorite? Why was that your favorite game console in television? Oh, that's not my favorite console, but I mean, that's the first one I started on. And so, I, like, whenever I talk about it, I'm like, yeah, I start on this uh, in television, no one remembers it. And so, but I mean, I have such fond memories of, like, playing Burger Time or, like, Donkey Kong Jr. on that. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I guess that's just, like, what really got me, you know, into the gaming road. Did you ever play the uh, Dungeons and Dragons on that, on in television? Was that the one called Dragon, um, Dragon's Lair or something? I don't think no, so. I think it was called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. No, yeah. I didn't play that one. Yeah, for hours. <laughs> My cousins, two two girls, they loved that game. Oh, really? Yeah, we, cool. we, we would play it just endlessly. What's your, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, there's an interesting thing. Do you find um, uh, at conventions or, or wherever you appear that some younger, like, girls kind of, like, look up to you guys because of what you're doing? Do you see, like, some kind of connection with that? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, like, it's really cool when, like, the coolest part of our job is when, like, younger girls come up to us and say, like, oh, you know, you guys are, like, really inspiring. We're like, I want to be a frag doll when I grow up, even though that sounds really cheesy. But, <laughs> I mean, I think it's really, like, cool that, you know, they see that, like, oh, there's, you know, older girls playing games, and so I'm not, like, an outcast. And now it's becoming so, like, it's becoming more regular for girls to play games, too. Like, I mean, so many young girls are picking up, like, 
you know, DSs or Game Boy Advances and, you know, PSPs, and they're just becoming more addicted to gaming, and they're realizing that, you know, it's not just for boys. And especially because of the accessibility. That really makes yeah, a difference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know the P P C P the P is P C P. Oh, yeah, the PSP. You, see, that, that, you don't need a console. And you the just dual screen, you know, and the TV have gone by. You know, the the the, the PSP. I can't believe all the stuff that they're bringing out for that. Um, that is a really cool handheld system that has gone beyond anything that I thought they were going to do with it. You know, I kind of thought you know, handheld games are going to start going by the wayside, and that yeah. just totally blew the doors off of that. Yeah, I just got a DS and a PSP around Christmas time this year, so that's all I've been playing lately. So I kind of, even though I got a 360, but I haven't even touched it because I've been playing so much like handheld stuff. And this is, this is your job, correct? Um, yeah, some of us have other like part-time jobs. So we like some of us are students, or we have part-time jobs, and a few of us have full-time. So it's kind of a mix. Do you wake up and go, "Wow, I get paid to play games"? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, sometimes I'm, like, playing and I'm like, man, you know, I should be logging, like, fractal hours for this, even though, like, we only are allowed, you know, certain hours for certain games. But I'm like, man, I should be getting paid, paid to play, like, WoW and stuff because I play so much WoW. <laughs> <But> <laughs> so how, how did you becoming a fractal came come about? Well, they put out this ad. It was pretty much just like any other job application looking for female gamers specifically to kind of represent their company. And they wanted people who, like, really knew games and had played them for a long time. So they pretty much, you know, we sent out, like, gaming resumes, regular resumes, like, cover letters saying, you know, this is why, you know, it wasn't called Fragdolls at the time, but they were just looking for female gamers. And so I just sent out, you know, a whole list of games, like, I was currently playing or games, my favorite games, and, you know, why I felt like I was experienced enough to, you know, fulfill the position, and they interviewed me, and it was down to, like, ten girls, and I guess they picked the top seven, and then um, one girl actually dropped out, which is why now we're looking for a few replacements. So we're currently auditioning for Fragdoll still. And how would somebody uh, go about doing that? Well, if you go to our website, fragdolls.com, there's um, information there, but pretty much we're just looking for, um, I guess you just send in, like, a gaming resume, a cover letter, and maybe some pictures, and... I guess they'll be in touch. So it, they've they've been doing this for the past couple months, so it's still in the works. So we haven't really like narrowed it down to you is, know ten girls yet or anything. Is but. there a deadline on there that you're aware of? Or? Um, I think we're trying to do it by E3 and okay. maybe sooner. It was supposed to be by New Year's, but I think they're still just um, trying to you know take some time to do some other stuff. After yeah. after we talk to you, I'll, I have a actually have a <clears throat> some information from the site that I'll pass on to our listeners in case okay. there's anybody out there that's yeah. interested. So that'd be cool. What about the um, Xbox Live Frag Doll Friday? Talk, can you talk about that? Um, yeah, we do that every couple weeks. Um, it's just through Xbox.com. You can sign up there, and we pretty much just take um, I guess maybe up to 300 people who sign up, and then we divvy up the names, and we just spend about. Two hours, we like split them up into groups, and we spend about two hours playing with the people who sign up on whatever specific game it is. So it's just a good chance for people to, you know, actually get to game with us because a lot of people complain like, oh, it's so hard to get on your friends list. You know, how do I know what time you're on and stuff like that? And they just really want to like, you know, see how good we are, get a good challenge or whatever. So you know, it's just a really good time for the community to get together and play with us. I just got uh, an Xbox just on uh, Saturday, actually. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine who is a woman, and she works at Best Buy, she got it for me. And mm-hmm. uh, so she was over to the house, and my wife and I, and we were playing. You know, I love first-person shooters, but um, I've always played them on the computer. So I always have a keyboard and mouse. So I oh. run around in Halo, like, an <laughs> like shooting into walls and looking at the floor. And, you know, like, oh, my, why don't they just make a keyboard and mouse for the damn <laughs> Xbox? See, How was your job, wife? Man, Did huh? she play? Uh, well, she we were, she was playing Burnout Three with us because she uh-huh. likes to crash the cars. And, oh, okay. <laughs> you're the opposite for me. I I, I I'm uh, I'm not as into the computer games. I I played some games on computer, but I'm much before the console. Yeah, and I guess I just like I couldn't do the whole PC shooter before because it just like made me sick when I tried to play Quake, and then I picked up Halo and I just like got used to the way that played, and I went back to the PC shooters and suddenly I could do it. Yeah. So it was really weird, but yeah, I'm still just used to Xbox shooters for now. That's my favorite system is the Xbox. I've had that for about 
Well, since it came out, actually. And yeah. I haven't gotten a 360 yet, and I'm kind of holding back a little bit yet. I was a little taken with the way they kind of presented the new one, so I'm kind of holding off a little bit and see if things change a little bit. Yeah, actually, I really like the way they do the whole Xbox Live interface. Like, you just have one button, and it brings up, like, all the information that you need to know about, like, your friends, messages, like, you know, downloads and stuff like that. And it's just, like, kind of a overlay that comes halfway on the screen, so you can still be in your game and still just look at the information. And it's just generic, so it's not specific per game. So I like that a lot. I think that was one of the really cool things they added to it. That, that's what I'm hearing from a lot of gamers is, like, their favorite thing. Oh really? Uh, it, with the Xbox 360, is that was one of the best you know things that they feel is has been improved. The, yeah. One yeah. of the most um, you know that, 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 that all the gamers are really talking about how Xbox Live is so easy to use now and all the different things you can do with it. So. Yeah, I even downloaded like the trailer for Mission Impossible 3, and I was like, cool! Like I don't have to do this on my computer, and I can just watch it like on a TV, which was really neat. I'd never done that before, so. So it's like a TiVo and a, <laughs> it's a video well, yeah. game system. I mean, it's, you know, the systems now are becoming like, you know, they are computers. Well, that's what Microsoft wants to accomplish, yeah. is total living yeah. room domination. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, you can put your photos up there. There's even like a virtual market where you can like buy like extra credits to purchase other like demo games and stuff like that. I don't know. It's crazy. Um, do you find uh, I'm I'm totally not a gamer at all, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to word this question. Um, like when you play some of these first-person shooter games, or just some of the games that are obviously geared towards the men, um, is there are there games out there that that do they even think of women when they make these games, or it's, or is it completely a male market? Well, I feel like of course they try to advertise more towards males because they think that girls don't play so that's why they just like oh we got advertised towards the males but then a lot of girls end up really liking these games so i wish i don't really want them to make like what we call pink games like you know barbie shopping games or something like (laughs) you know just make good quality games and you know it's more like mass appeal now because so many girls are interested like so many girls play like mmos like wow and stuff and like everquest so it'd be nice that they just geared it towards like everybody not just like males it's almost like, you know, you, you can understand coming from it where you are, but then you don't want them to change it specifically to make it, you know, try to... Yeah, I don't want, like, girly games that right. are like, oh, because girls can't play complicated games or something. Like, I mean, I just want good quality games, but it doesn't have to be, like, the kind of games where, you know, like, Playboy Mansion. Like, obviously, that's geared towards males, but it doesn't have to be that kind of game, but, you know, just, like, right. a fun game, like Halo is geared towards, like, everybody, or, like, you know, Ubisoft games, like Rainbow Six, or, like, Splinter Cell is really, like, yeah. fun for everybody. Splinter Cell is a great game, and, and yeah. one that I thought of, too, when uh, we were talking about the Frag Dolls, I said, you know, one of my favorite games for the Nintendo GameCube is the Metroid Prime series, which the lead character is a female mm-hmm. in in a suit, and that's the character you play, and so, you know, I think it's great because it's, it's yeah, different. It's yeah. not the same thing. Or so even it's not Perfect changing. Dark Zero has a female lead character. Right. So it, they're still cool games, and it, it's just like playing as if you know it was, it was normally how it used to be when it was you know stereo, stereotypical that males were the the majority audience. Um, you're still having great games, and, and everybody's enjoying them. And, and now there is female lead characters and such. So mm-hmm. I think it's cool. Yeah, like one thing I heard is just like, I mean. People watch movies, so it's not like only males watch movies and females watch certain kind of movies. I mean, it's like maybe gaming in the future will be like, oh, they're not specifically gamers; they're just you know people who play games, which is like a normal thing. So it doesn't, they don't, we don't want it to be like you know segregated by sex later on. Like that's what we're hoping to accomplish. Well, the video game industry is now bigger than Hollywood as far as money earned at the box office each year. Is it really? Yep, they they make more money on video game sales than they do on movie theater tickets each year. And box office sales, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So uh, it's it's becoming extremely mainstream. Yeah, yeah. And, like, seeing it on MTV recently, I was just like, wow, it was a big surprise. Like, you know, that's, to me, like, oh, wow, it's really becoming mainstream when it's on MTV. (laughs) So you guys... Getting your own G four show or <laughs> no? We've <laughs> appeared on there, I think, twice, but um, no, no show anytime soon. Not that I know of. <laughs> there 
are always talking about like a reality show though like a reality show that where we would kind of like a making of the band when i mean because we are looking for like two three girls up to three girls like you know it would be a great show we'd be like auditioning them they would come in and we compete against them i'd be like oh that girl sucks she only scored like two kills or something <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of entertaining, but I don't know. It's America's Next Frag Doll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I could watch that. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> who, who is the best frag You might be surprised. Who is the best player? And you could say yourself since you're the mm. other one on the phone. If you want. Well, I mean, there's, uh, there's a few of us who are definitely, like, the com- competition ones. Like, when we do competitions, it's usually, like, uh, Valkyrie, Brooklyn, me, and usually someone else, like Jinx. But we, I mean, since, like... You know, we don't have that many players. There's not, you know, a huge pool we can choose from. So that's why we're looking for more girls, so right. we can have more competitive ones. On your blog, you, you said that uh, you're one of those gamers sometimes that you just love to just get in there and just go, even if you're out right away. You just like to go right at it. Oh, yeah, it's terrible because I always die really fast, and then, like, I get yelled at for, like, not sticking together. So I'm not, like, it. I need a lot of practice in the like teamwork side. You're so I don't more of like run and gun. I don't want to get you on my team in Rainbow Six, is what you're saying then? Oh uh, yeah, I've <laughs> been known to like grenade kill my own teammates plenty of times. So. <laughs> but like when we do like free for all Halo, I'm just like you know I can just be on my own and like you know get lots of kills. But team killing, I mean, team, playing on team is just a little harder for me because I got to be really aware of like where my teammate is. It just takes so much practice, so. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I've just picked up an Xbox Live system, and and I'm just getting into that. So, mm-hmm. playing games is something I've always done, and uh, you know, I, I consider myself fairly good at it. But to uh, to go in and play on live and pick up people who, you know, I, I know they they graduated with your skill levels and such, but um, still to to get on a, a group, you know, and then have to you know conjuncture with them is a little, it seems to me a little uh, something I'm going to have to get used to as well, but. Yeah, because we're definitely, I mean, we weren't like a clan before Fragdoll, so we don't really know how to play together with each other. So, I mean, it took a lot of practice. I mean, before a tournament, we'll spend like up to eight hours a day, you know, practicing together just to get used to the maps and get used to like the way we play. So, but we don't do that many tournaments so that we don't have, because not all of us have so much time to put into those kind of practices. So it really takes a lot of dedication. So, Where's your handle come from? Oh, Sapuku? Mm-hmm. Um, have you guys heard of that website, Real Ultimate Power, with no. the ninjas? No. No. No, it's realultimatepower.net, and I thought it was like a hilarious website. And there, it's actually a real Japanese word meaning ritual suicide. Oh, and yeah, so okay. It, yeah, that's where I took that name from. That's appropriate if you like to charge blindly in the battle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is, but it's not a good representative of, like, you know, I'm a great gamer. By the way, my name means ritual suicide. <laughs> <laughs> So what games are you most looking forward to uh, as far as what might be coming out in the next six months or so or whatever? Oh, gosh. I almost feel like I don't really know what's coming out in the next six months. Besides, like, PS3 is coming up. So, I mean, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And I think Far Cry's having an expansion pack coming out. What else is coming out? Uh, gosh, I really don't know what's coming out. <laughs> I can't answer that. I don't know. Do you think they're going to... They're gonna do something with the Xbox by the time the P- PS3 comes out, or do you think you're gonna keep it as is? Mm, well, I think isn't Halo Three coming out? Yeah, around that time. Yes. Hmm. Well, I think there's so much more they can do with the 360 still. Oh it's yeah, just, that's why I've waited and haven't purchased. Yeah, them, yeah, like I think the graphics will get like way better. It's just like it has so much potential, but right now, you know, when it starts out, it's always kind of like yeah. the okay games sometimes. Right. So like the bigger ones come out later, I guess. Cool. I don't really know what's up for the 360 right now. Now, do you get all those systems for free? Um, well, they're expensed because they're all work-related. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, I couldn't even find a 360, but um, Game Crazy, the store that's like with Hollywood Video, they yeah. like read our blogs, and they're like, oh, you guys don't have 360s? Here you go. And so they hooked us up, which is really nice. That's, what I that's awesome. Do. Yeah. I, if, if I could do that, I, I wouldn't have to work next year. Yeah. Yeah, you could be a frag dog. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got the hair going. Yeah, we could we could put some fishnets on you or something, and you. Oh, could... Hey, we get a lot of mail requests for you know, can I be a frag doll? We even like on our forum, some guy had a picture of him in like a dress and stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> there are guys who want to be frag dolls too. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> what's what's your most satisfying story about taking down like a a know it all gamer who came up and was like. Dissing you and, and you just like took him down. What's what's your favorite story? 
Uh, well, probably like some of the are my favorite times are when we actually won like tournaments. Like, I mean, we practiced so hard for the Rainbow Six Three Black Arrow tournament at the Penny Arcade Convention, and we won the whole thing. We didn't even lose a round, and that was like our first time like coming out like in public, and people were all like, "Who are these girls? They must be booth babes." Like, there was so much talk about us <laughs> being booth babes, and it was ridiculous because we don't even wear anything close to like booth babe clothing. We wear like sleeveless shirts. And now we wear, like, T-shirts, which is, like, and jeans. But people were calling us boot babes, like, oh, look how tight their shirts are or something. And it was ridiculous. And then people sat down, and they were just like, wait a second, I just got killed. And they were just walking away, like, all silent. Like, we would be like, oh, good game, you know, that was fun, come back later. And they were just walking away, like, you know, totally in silence. Like, they didn't even want to talk to us. So, but, I mean, I mean, I want them to be, like, friendly to us, but it was kind of like, you know, they were just, like, really in shock, like, who we were and, like, where do we come from, you know. What planet are you guys from? <laughs> <laughs> and they were all in love too. <laughs> yeah, there was like much worse. yeah, they're like they're they're good looking, but and they're deadly. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> well, thanks for breaking the stereotype. <laughs> cool. Great. Is there anything else? Any last minute things you want to say or anything? Uh, anything mm-hmm. about like an upcoming convention? You can check out her blog on the fragdolls dot com. Yeah, we have our blogs update every few days. Um, We always have Fragdoll Fridays coming up. I think there's one this Friday for Perfect Dark Zero. Mm -hmm. And we're definitely looking for female gamers out there. You just have to be 18 and over and just just apply because you never know. Because, I mean, I applied just thinking, like, oh, what the heck. Like, I love games, so why not? And, you know, it definitely got me places. So I think it's a great opportunity and a great way if you're really passionate about games and you're female, you know, just, you know, try it out. So Is there some aspects that they... They they make you shy away from you know like it's like you know when you work down at Disney you know you can't smoke on the field and you know stuff like that are there are there any restrictions like that? Mm, well, I mean you are technically like representatives of Ubisoft, so right. they don't want you know just anybody. You have to you know represent the company. So I mean people can smoke, but it's a little. I mean you gotta be careful of like what you're doing because you are sure. representing the company. So sure. yeah, that's totally, yeah. totally understandable. Yeah, great. And yeah. check out some comics. Jim Lee's got some stuff coming up, so, you know, find, walk into a comics shop. Uh, yeah, I did actually just buy that Wizard Jim Lee, you know, special All About Him book. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. It's, like, my new favorite book. Now, where you're in California? Yeah. And and where about in California? Like, Silicon Valley. Uh, so you're all you're up north then? Mm-hmm. Okay, because I was like San Jose. Yeah, yeah, all right. I was gonna say because Jim Lee's based in La Jolla. Oh yeah, I know he's so. in La Jolla. Yeah. I went to school in San Diego, so I was all oh, like, so you're all, you're all very I love familiar. San Diego too. Yeah. Cool. Well, hopefully, uh, we'll see you at San Diego. So, will you guys be at the Comic Con? Absolutely. Or? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Cool. Then, if I go this year, I'll definitely stop by. Awesome. Great. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, have a great day. Me. You too. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. bye. Maybe the CGS crew can challenge the frag frag dog. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> I get my ass handed to me. I'm gonna wipe you. Wipe well, I'm gonna have you. to bring in some reserves then, because you know, with Brian and Jamie, don't play games, and Matt play. does some. You mean well, Peter and Jamie? Well, yeah, Peter. I'm sorry, Peter and Jamie, and Matt does a little, and Shane plays some too. But I can not, play. I just don't have the stuff. I don't. I, I'm just saying. I don't think they have the skill level to to, to be in a competition. No, you know, I'll be much like better. That. I mean, I won't be competing, but I. It's just going to take me a couple of weeks to get used to the controller. I'd love to do that. I, mean, I have I'd love played to go, well, go to the, go to the, Try to hook up on one of those uh, Friday night Friday, yeah, Friday things. I'd, I'd love to. I mean, it's not it's not that I want to beat a girl kind of right. thing. It's just that I think it's cool just having competitions, you know, right. playing the game competitions. Well, we'll definitely be having some CGS clan, you, uh, you know, Halo Xbox, 2 Slaughterfest. Yeah. I mean, it's going to... We're going to have some fun. I was going crazy, though, yesterday morning. I was so ready to slam that controller down. It's like, you know, when you are so used to a mouse and keyboard, that... Mother effing controller. You can't you can't do anything with it. It's like you just run in circles. It doesn't have the sensitivity that the mouse has and you, and you you don't have enough buttons like the jump button. You have to stop steering to press the jump button. It's like on the on the computer, I never stop. I'm I'm moving all around. I'm looking all around while I'm jumping cuz you jump constantly. It's like I got to let go to jump. Well, that's stupid. How am I supposed to control? My, oh, it's, it's like driving me insane. You'll, you'll figure it out because it's it, you can do all that stuff. It's just a matter of getting used to it. I mean, coming from a keyboard mouse background from yourself, it is much more difficult. But even when I was switching over to the new consoles, and then they started making games specifically that you had to use the analog controls, 
you know, that was like foreign to me because I'm used to directional pad and buttons, and that was it. So when they started having games where they're all analog control, I was like, this this sucks. But once I got used to it, I love it. I'll never go back again. I, I really do enjoy it. So it's just a matter of getting used to it. You'll get the hang of it. I know it. I'll get used to it eventually, but, man, it was and frustrating. It, and the one reason I didn't buy Halo when it first came out was because I played a demo, and it wasn't so much controlling Master Chief playing the game. It was when you got into the vehicle, and that, to me, was almost impossible. It was To me, I thought it was the worst setup to, for a vehicle in a game to try to control that I was just like, screw this. I don't understand why this is such a great game because this sucks. And I waited about a year or so, and then I bought Halo and played the whole thing straight through, and, you know, I got used to it. I got used to playing it, and once I did, I got out of that mindset and just enjoyed the game. But So it just takes a little time. You'll get used to it. We used to play at work as, like, our... Part of my job was to administer the Quake server. I had a separate computer under my desk that did nothing but house the Quake <laughs> server so that when lunchtime came around, the 10 people in the office would sign up to the Quake server. And the boss would come in. Some days he'd come in at like 1 in the afternoon and be like, you're done working. We're playing Quake for the rest of the day. We play like four hours of Quake just continuously, like all afternoon. Oh, my God, it was so awesome. So, I, I mean, played Quake on the computer. That was one of the only games that I've played that I played all the way through and, and- – I, we never played the actual game. We just played Deathmatch, oh. you know. Play Quake <laughs> I Two, used the supplement Deathmatch. packs, you know, and all that stuff. And I used to love the hell out of it. So if, if anybody from Xbox is listening out there and wants to hook me up, <laughs> that's fine. I'll, I'll take an Xbox. That's great. You, you know. want to become a gamer again, Jamie? Sure. I, it's just I don't have the time. Because you used to thing. play Nintendo, oh, yeah. like it was going out of style. Oh, yeah, or, no, or, I, I played, but then it just got to be. I just didn't have the time between everything else that I did. That's the cool thing about being self-employed. There's some days that I don't have nothing to do. If I can take a day off and get up in the morning, grab some breakfast, and sit there and play Xbox till the freaking time to go to bed. And I just love it, love it, love it. <coughs> you can go to their website, like I said, fragdolls.com. And um, if you know, if you have a sister, girlfriend, or just a friend, or somebody that's in the California area, or I don't know, they didn't really say where cool you mom. need to be. <laughs> yeah, you know, send them to the website. There are some specific qualities that they're looking for. They have down things like. Uh, hardcore gamer, par- particularly with multiplayer online titles, experienced first-person shooter players preferred, outgoing personality, comfortable talking to gamers all day, good writing and organizational skills, flexible sc- schedule, able to travel on short notice. Um, your gaming resume should include uh, normal resume items, but also uh, what games you are currently playing, your favorite games, what platforms you own, and anything else from your gaming background that you feel is important. Uh, You also need to answer this question, why should I be the next frag doll? And you should include a few pictures of yourself, at a minimum uh, a headshot, headshot, as well as any pictures that highlight your personality. You can send all that information to fragdolls at ubisoft.com. So that was really cool. Thanks, uh, Emily, and thanks, uh, Mike, for setting that up for us. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Just a little change of gears since we, sure, you know. We know we have some gamers out there. Well, absolutely. So. I mean, they, you know, the gaming community is very intense in the comic community. They're I mean, closely, closely tied now, a lot, bet. it seems. You know, and you, you see a lot of times in Wizard and, you know, on forums that a lot of the creators and such are avid gamers. Oh, yeah. So, you, you, you talk about it blowing Hollywood out with, uh, with in terms of money. I mean, there's a huge market now with voice actors, voice, uh, you know, oh, getting yeah. into yeah. the gaming system and... and games and video games and whatnot. Well, they have production budgets of millions oh. and millions of dollars to develop a game. So, I mean, you think about it. I mean, it's, it's a well, no-brainer. Yeah. A lot of them games that sell millions and millions of copies and you figure $50 a pop. I mean, it right. doesn't take long to start recouping your costs. So, I mean, uh, a lot of... I mean, it really came prominent when the GTA series came around and you started getting a lot of uh, well-known actors and actresses doing voices, you know, for... A video game, which I, you know, which you're not used to. People you know, you know, not. The 007 uh, games were big ones that did that. And now all your movie tie in games, they, you know, they secure the actors from the movie to come in and do the voiceovers as well. So that way your experience playing the game is still, you know, consistent with the movie and such. So it's, uh, it's all good as far as I'm concerned. So you want to switch gears a little bit yeah. and uh, talk about our experience at episode 100? Absolutely. We. We've talked about a lot on the forum, but we know that a lot of you guys out there, guys and gals, don't actually go onto the forum. So we just wanted to, you know, touch base and let you know how cool it actually was. Um, it really was. It turned out to really be an event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we got pretty much everybody who said they were coming came. Um, 
the two hours before we even put on the microphones and the headphones, we did nothing but talk to the listeners who came, and they shopped, and and uh, um, and then afterwards we went out to eat. I mean, the whole day, it was a day. It was a whole yep. day. It was a whole event. I mean, they started coming in. We got there about 11. I think the first, I guess Bruce, which is about the first person to come in, Bruce and his clan. from Actually, I think it was Vince. I think, yeah, really? Vince, Vince and Marty were there. Yeah, really? They were there okay. like a quarter of 12, I think. Yep. That's right. You're right. And... Um, they just kept coming. Uh, uh, Lem was gracious enough to set up like a, a great sale for everybody, a 20% off whatever they bought in the store. And I, I had hoped that you know every, people would wouldn't feel us putting the five dollar you know thing uh, uh, admission thing yeah. just to do. I was hoping they would do that, and they wouldn't feel like they couldn't find anything. We figured they could find something for five bucks in the store, and I think I'm the only one who actually only spent about five bucks. Everybody else who came dropped. I mean, up 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 to a hundred dollars they were dropping in the store, which I thought was great, and it really it helped helped Lem see what we could do. And I also think if we ever need that space again, he'll yeah. be more than willing to let us. Uh, let us use it. It benefited everyone. I mean, you know, people got to come in and buy stuff that they couldn't get from their areas where they were. Mm-hmm. You know, Lem benefited by people coming in, you know, and, and, and spending money and enjoying the store and, you know, really, um, really enjoying the store, not just because of what they could find, but, you know, how it's set up and how big it was. And yeah, everybody we, had nothing but good things to say about it, which I thought was great. I think we are, we're very jaded because we are so used to that store where we look at other stores and we say, wow, the other stores are cool. In the area, I mean, we we've talked about it. we've talked about sure. other stores in the area, thinking, wow, if, if only Golden Eagle did that or that, and then to see, you know, twenty people walk into a store we've been at and just be utterly flabbergasted at the size, yeah. the the you know the content which we were always complaining, you know, oh they don't have enough trades, they don't have enough this, oh my God, the back issues, I'd I'd be down here every day, I'd spend my entire day down here you know, and and all that, it, it just it blew me away to think of. And it gave me a new appreciation for what we have, you know, and, and how, you know, I won't say blessed, but how blessed we are to have something like this in in our area. In our backyard. And everybody was so cool. Like, Vince showed up. He had a whole short box full of Groove comics for me. It was almost a complete run. It's missing, like, I don't know, 30 issues or whatever for that whole 120 issue of Groovy. All in Mylar. <laughs> Which is great. Well, he was, he's the he was king like, of Mylar. that's right. He is. And then uh, Marty had a whole stamp collection for me. Not just a couple stamps that he saved, but an entire stamp collection with the book and the binder and the whole thing. Because he said, you know, he doesn't look at it anymore, and you know, he wants it to go to somebody who appreciates it. That crew also brought a whole bunch of toys to add to the uh, well, the, uh, the toy contest. The toy right? contest. Yep. They Shane took a look at those, and um, Bill Hughes just picked up like a whole pile of comics out of his collection that he said he didn't right. want and uh, there's three paul pope 100 issues yeah, in there i would definitely want to look at those mm-hmm. and you know there's uh, eddie eddie campbell's bacchus book one is in there and you know some odd men like defenders and <coughs> random daredevil but you know uh, there's stuff i've never read before most of it so i was like oh, i'll check it out that's great that's kind of a probably beginning of a cool trend and we do this more often that people are just going to come and do that <laughs> hey it's gonna be like a swap session in a way you know like, yeah hey you have you read this or you know i'm gonna get rid of this stuff yep. anybody want it you know and which is cool why not sure you know i actually it reminds me i you don't know, have that box of stuff that i wanted to thin out of my collection i wanted to take it and say uh, anybody oh. just take whatever you want and i completely forgot because we were rushing around we'll in the morning to, yeah but i wanted to do the same thing because some stuff i just don't need anymore and we had uh, randy dixon down from connecticut we had sean Whelan out from ohio lena taylor came from california uh, sean stayed over at our house so you didn't have to drive back to Ohio the same day, and you know it was super pleasant. And he brought uh, Shane and I copies of uh, the '60s Batman series on DVD, oh, cool. which I'm That's right. sitting down watching and loving every second of. <laughs> he also gave us a really cool, which is sitting right to the left of me. <clears throat> Would you call it a trophy? I guess. Well, like a plaque, kind of. It's, it's like thing. a laser etched yeah. glass. Yeah. yeah. That says like congratulations crystal. on 100 episodes, January 22nd, 2006. On a little marble base. I think it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's cool. So if you heard it presented on the show, <clears throat> um, it's also on, is it? No, I guess it's, yeah, no, it is on the teaser video as well, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. 
And I do want to get some pictures up on the Yeah, we'll have to put a 100-episode gallery up, you know, yeah. a section in the gallery so people can check things out there, too. Uh, but I was, you know, I, you know, I, when you, when we were first discussing about having a live show and having it, I was kind of like, wow, how many people are really going to show up, you know? And, uh, yeah, same here. You know, I, I was kind of reserved about it, but I thought, you know, when we started putting it out there and started seeing response, I was like, wow, you know, there's more to it than I thought would would willing to participate or willing to drive. I mean, on the average, yeah. how many people out of those 20-some people drove at least two hours to get here um, and then spend the whole day here? The whole Baltimore crew and New York and yeah. northern Jersey. and It's great. I mean, we had a, I had a blast. I mean, it was just neat. It was neat hanging around the store, you know, with, with people who you kind of knew, but, you know, now you got to put a face to them and, you know, kind of really got to know them personally rather than just on the forum and... and um, and then we got to do the show, and which I thought went really well. It was neat to have Lem on the show and interview him, and and uh, everybody get to express their feelings to him and what they thought of the show. We can get a lot of outside influence, and and uh, so I thought he had a really good experience. In fact, he did when I stopped in the next week at the store. We were talking about it, and he he was still talking about it. He 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 was really in, really enjoyed himself. And really thought it was a, a wonderful thing, and I I think it was, did kind of make an impression on him, you know, as far as you know what this is all about, you know. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe there, there's even a part of him that you know, a little small part that's re- his faith is restored in, in certain in why he has a comic shop. Yeah. You know, when you look at that, you look at twenty people who haven't ever been to his store before, and they're just like little kids running around, yeah. <laughs> picking up things out of every box. It, it was nice because it was almost like a testimonial to him. And he, a lot of you don't know him or, or didn't, um, you know, met him for the first time at, at the show. Lem, uh, in the last maybe four or five years, has gone through a lot. I mean, if you look at him, you kind of can see that he's kind of thin, a little frail, and he was never that. He was always a big, robust guy, very much like his son. And uh, just over over the over a period of maybe two or three years, people started noticing he was starting to get a little thin, starting to get, and he didn't know what it was, and the doctors didn't know what it was, and he's. Basically, he's come back. He's it was really bad for you know a couple of years ago. He was, you know, they, they were working on the medicines, getting the medicines right. And you got to figure this is a guy who a doesn't have health insurance. I mean, he has health insurance, but it's like he's paying for it out of his pocket. The store, you know, and, and like he said at the show, if it wasn't for and he said his manager it was, that was like John Duffy who's been here. And Scott Powers, if it wasn't for those guys, I don't know if that store would have survived. But he has battled back through his faith and through, you know, doctors and all that to, you know, at least he's living now a semi-normal life. I know that sounds like he was, you know. But for us, I think, to come and express our feelings and then to have, like Kevin said, have 20 people who he did not know uh, two hours before, stand in front of him and give testimonials about the store, tell how much they liked it, and then to read the form about how they were impressed that he remembered their name as they walked out the yeah. door, how he, you know, he shook their hand, looked them in the eye, said thank you for coming. That is Lem Fosnock. That is, again, you know, why we say we do stuff for him. And when he asks, we have no problem doing something for him, because that's the kind of man he is. And that made me feel great to see him get that appreciation. And that was all spare of the moment, uh, you know, nothing planned. We had nothing planned. We were just going to talk to him. And to have everybody have the same reaction, I thought was great. And, and it gave everyone kind of a grasp of what we've been experiencing for the past 20 years, mm-hmm. you know, going to that store. You know, that it is like a community. You know, you have a relationship with the people behind the counter and the owner of the store. It's not a segregation as a customer and staff kind of thing. And and that makes it more inviting and more welcoming, And uh, which, of course, you know, spurred into us hanging out at the store and talking and doing all the things we did, which, you know, of course, has led us to where we are right now. So yeah, that's, that's just the kind of man he is, and that's the kind of, yeah. you know, owner he is. And that's why, you know, that's one of the main reasons... That when there used to be four or five comic store shops in this area, and there is only one now, and that's and he is the reason. Yeah, they've just no doubt in my mind. Well, and, and you know, I shopped at some of the others, and there was no doubt 
<laughs> as to why yeah. they're out of business. Sure. You know, just the personalities of the people running the, the shops it scares you right away. Yeah. Peter and I can attest to as far as who we had subscriptions with before <coughs> Lem started up his store and – and uh, when Lem opened his door, the com- <laughs> it's, it's like night and day. I mean, you know, you had a hole in the wall with some guy who had books piled up all around the room, and, you know, it was very uh, unkempt, and, you know, he's a nice guy, but, I mean, the store was not inviting at all. It was just a small little thing, and, and like I said, books were stacked upon stacks behind the counter and not in bags and boards, and, and then you go down to Lem's, and it's freaking clean, and... Everything's displayed real nice, and and he's you know very open, and you know, I remember when I first time I went down there, he, I said, well you know what, I might as well just get a subscription with you, you know, and and stop my subscription at the other place, and he was like, no, don't do that, you know, I don't mind if you come down here and stuff, but you know, stay with the guy you had, and you know, and that and I did, and I did it for like another two three months, and but what was happening was at the time, even though you had the same distributors. Like I would, we would go to the guy that we went to, you know, Hildebrands on Ninth Street, and and um, the, the day books came out, you'd be like, oh, well, these two books didn't ship for me, you know, I'll have to, I'll get them next week, you know. But then you go down to Lem's store, and it's like, well, he got those books, but then he might have been shorted one or two other books that right. that Ken got. So it was kind of like we used to go down there to kind of pick up stuff that, you know, because of just distribution, not because of the comic store owner's fault. But by going into that store, then I started going like, well, no, I, I think I'd rather be here. And then finally got to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm switching. I, I, I feel I want to, and that's what I wanted to do. And once I said that, he was like, cool, you know. But he, ta- he told me not to. He talked me out of it the first time. So just goes to show how he was supportive as having other, you know, stores in the area, even though they were competition in a sense. But he's very supportive, and he expressed that at the show, you know, when we, when we were talking on episode 100. So really kind of got a good feel for kind of who he is and, and what he's established. Plus, there was a, a lot of fun just going out afterwards to TGI Fridays yeah. and getting getting to sit with these guys and girls and just talk about, you know, it wasn't always talk. We weren't always talking about comics. No. We were, I, I know the, the conversation down on at our end of the table, it was sci-fi and, and yeah, geeky stuff. But still, it That's was... That's because you had Bruce and, and Ian and uh, Shane and, 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 and Lena <laughs> all right in a row. And you, it's like... Boom! Major sci-fi conversation yeah. going on right yep. there. So I mean that that was a lot of fun. I and as an observer, I I love just sitting and watching people. You know, I was listening to, you know, kind of kind of listening to the down at at Kevin and Brian's end, which was all Moon Knight, which was no, all Moon Knight, no, no, no. the color of the costume, <laughs> oh, no. and and up at Peter's end where he was talking to uh, to Bill. I was rapping with Tasha. Yeah, she wasn't was, even sitting with her husband. Her husband was clear on the other side of the table. I was spreading the love. Yeah. Right, well. Yeah. <laughs> I got some love that day. <laughs> hey, Tasha. She's over there laughing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. And in fact, it was almost like you didn't want it to end. It was like, no. can, isn't this Saturday? Can't it be tomorrow yet? We can do something. Well, else? I was just going to say we're we're probably going to do the same thing for episode 150. Uh, may end up being sooner than 150. I don't know, but but for 150, we're certainly going to try to do it again. And. And we want to plan it on a Saturday this time, so it can be all day. You know, the recording will be at whatever time to whatever time, but then the rest of the day is for hanging out, whatever. Um, we, you know, we hopefully we can double the number of people who come. Let's shoot for forty people instead of twenty or whatever, and let's just have a big party, you know. And and let's. And I'm absolutely sure everybody that was there will be there again. Oh, sure I don't have any doubt about it. Because uh, again, if people who aren't reading the forum, uh, Vince has already. Started talking up the fact of making just meeting at Golden Eagle uh, once a month, once every other month hmm. type deal, and he's already had people say, "Yeah, I'll do that." Oh, yeah, I'll I'll drive down, and you know, so he's even thinking about you know doing something unofficially, but using Golden Eagle. And I've already talked to Lem about. It. Lem's like, "Sure, just let me know when." He's he'd like to have you know some prizes for people and that kind of stuff. So. He's all up for it, so you know, Vince, just you know, let him know. I know Marty's, Marty's emailed him uh, about some things. He, he told me he got an email from Marty, and he was talking. He he saw the uh, he saw the the oh. the Last Supper picture, yeah. <laughs> and uh, like I said, as a man of, of very heavy faith, he he laughed. He said, "Wow, that's pretty blasphemous." Yeah, uh, but he laughed. He so he got it. He wasn't. He was upset about it. He got the yeah. joke. 
And I thought that was hilarious. I, I, I almost fell over laughing when I saw it. <laughs> also, now, the, the Vince sitting there with Sammy David Jr. Yeah, yeah Sammy and Sammy the Last Supper. <laughs> I mean, that was. I happened to be in the store that day when that picture was posted up, and they put it on the the wallpaper of the computer screen in the store. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> they had pulled me behind the counter. Here, check this out. And that's all Lem could say is blasphemous, blasphemous, you know. <laughs> and they're, you know, fitting along with the, we were calling them the godfather of comics. And, you know, so there's just a whole bunch of carrying on, a whole lot of fun. So, I mean, with what they're setting up, it almost sounds like, you know, who knows, you could end up having a, a CGS monthly cram session, you know, a monthly, bi-monthly thing where, you know, they come hang out and just whatever. out at the store. Doesn't mean you have to record. You can if you want to, but if not, just a hangout, you know, just everybody get together and... And it it sounds like what he wanted, they had at one time wanted to do something like that. They wanted to do a night where you just got together, rather than selling comics, you brought comics down to trade, you wanted to sit there and talk about comics, do stuff like that, and it sounds like through this, maybe, you know, quite by accident... They'll get that night that they wanted, and maybe it'll build where more of the customer base will come to it if they see it's happening. So there are I, no I, accidents. I'm afraid. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> kind of my fingers crossed because I, I. But like that's it. cool. I mean, and, and the thing is, it kind of develops that whole thing of what we've developed with the show as providing that presence of people being in the comic store, chatting with their friends, and you know, even though they can't experience that in real life, now they, you know, they've come attached to the store that we've started that out and then developed our show from that and now our audience is now wanting to do that and you know for us it'd be kind of cool too to hang out with them on the at the store and and provide that experience you know in real life as well as not just on the show and on the forum so so it just keeps growing you know and that's great so now i can truly become norm and and live at at golden eagle where everybody knows your name (laughs) i walk in norm What episode will be complete without stumping the Rios? This one is from Ross Johnson. Uh, question number one Marvel. Who was the first person to join the X Men after the original members? Professor X, Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Beast Angel, and Iceman. Mimic. That's correct. Question two, DC. What is the name of the main villain in the Green Arrow story, Sounds of Violence, by Kevin Smith? Uh, I hope I say it right. Onomatopoeia. That is correct. That was a cool character. I, I really I it was. liked it. it. He, had, he had a simple look. The, the, right. He had an O on his face, right? He had a yeah, black... Uh, yeah. Well, the onomatopoeia, is, isn't that the, the, the dot over the small I? No, it's the, it's when a word is exactly how it sounds, or like bang and pop. And oh, okay. You're yeah. thinking of umlaut. Oh, that's right. Or or something like that. But yeah, it was a, it was a cool character, and it was a, a an interesting story arc. Right. Indy, in Invincible, they have the Guardians of the Globe. These are basically the JLA with different names and different looks. What is the name of the character that is meant to be the Flash? Digging for the corner. What do you get the corner out of it? <laughs> because <laughs> I hear India and then I heard in, uh, Invincible and I went, oh, that's it. Um, Mr. Wizzy. The Red Rush. Oh. Okay. Quarter. Sooner or later, we gotta we got to make Invincible the book of the month. I, I need a reason to buy that. I read, I've read the first one. I'm, I'm like quarter way through the second one. I read all three. I read all three trades, the first three trades. I ordered them all at one time through DCPS and sat down and read all three of them at one time. And somehow, I don't know how I did it, but I ended up with two number ones. Oh, really? I think I bought, I think I ordered a number one previously and then didn't get it right away. A trade or? A trade. Oh. And then ordered all three of them, not realizing I'd already ordered one. And then ended up, oh. So I have a spare copy of uh, number one trade, so I can give that to you guys and you can start checking into that. And you can read the other ones, too. I read and then I'll know those invincible <laughs> questions. Make it, yeah. make, make it the first book in our library. Um, we have a response from John Morrow from Tomorrow's Publishing on the uh, year in 2005 comic review, comics oh, review. Cool. He says, 2005 was a watershed year for Tomorrow's Publishing. After our 10th anniversary in 2004, we entered our second decade reinvig- reinvigorated to bring out more and better publications and to market our company even more effectively. 
Our newest magazine, Back Issue, is re reaching new readers every issue, and its circulation has grown to make it our best-selling magazine in only its second year. Likewise, our companion books, Thunder Agents, Justice League, Titans, and our artist biographies, uh, Gene Colon, George, Tusca, George Tusca, and Modern Master Series on today's top artists, were very well received and continue to be top sellers. We even branched out to DVDs, such as In the Studio with George Perez, with great results. Fandom is alive and well, and we're predicting an even more prosperous 2006. Best regards, John Morrow. Cool. We have some voicemail. Hey, guys. It's Andrew from Bakersfield, California. I'm Brew Man 2 on the forum. And I wanted to call and give a quick off the rack for the last two issues of Wolverine. Uh, I believe they're written by uh, Daniel Way, if I remember correctly. And uh, I was worried at first, going, you know, coming off the strong Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. storyline and then with the you know, revelation in uh, House Them that Logan was going to come back with all of his memories, that all of a sudden it was just going to go to pot or just not be up to snuff. And I have to say that I'm really impressed with these last two issues. Uh, they've gone back to sort of what I think, for me, made the Wolverine run in the 80s and, and the early 90s really cool, where he's a mystery. I mean, Logan knows everything ab about his past, and he's going back and retouching uh, you know, all these things that, and finding new meaning behind all the things that occurred to him because he knows what happened, but... They're doing a real good job of just giving us hints about what he's learned and, and giving us a little more insight where, you know, while still keeping it serious. So as, as you go along, they, they have these little bits and pieces of flashes in the book that make you go, okay, well, maybe this is it, or maybe this is what he's saying. You can try to interpret what's going on and come up with their own take on it without having some sort of ham-handed, you know, exposition in, in the narration or the caption saying, this is what happened, this is what happened. So that's, that's been handled really well, especially compared to, you know, it was mentioned in the, in Off the Rack about the other storyline with Peter Parker's medical report, where this is something that the character knows and all the characters of the book know, but we don't know. And whereas that came across as really clumsy and sort of deliberately keeping something from us, because I, I just can't see that, you know, whatever was in that medical report, that there would be any sort of, you know, mental dialogue for Peter Parker or Mary Jane or Aunt May, where you wouldn't know about it, it wouldn't be touched upon, whereas in this, it's, it's real subtle that you're not getting the, the information, and uh, the artwork has, has been really good, I think. And all in all, it's just been really fun, and I'm really intrigued to see where it's going to go. So that's my two cents. People who haven't picked it up yet and like Wolverine from back in the day, I think you should go out and pick that book up right now. So anyways, thanks, guys. Keep, keep up the great show and great interviews, and I'll keep listening. So take it easy. Bye. Thank you, Ruman Chu. Is, is anybody in this room reading that Wolverine? Yep, I started picking it up. Oh, I, I get it. I like it, yeah. I was like, well, I'm buying Wolverine. Again. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I wasn't going to. I mean, I, you know, I was kind of intrigued with what they did in House of M, but then I started hearing when that first issue came out. I started hearing the, the clamor on the, on the internet how people were just raving about this, and I thought, well, you know, I'll check it out. I'll buy, I'll buy an issue and check it out, and I did, and I'm now picking it up. So, it is very good. Are you going to pick up the second title that's coming out? The Wolverine Origins. I I don't know. I'm on. I mean, I I, I understand what they're trying to do with that. Uh, I mean, my first reaction was no. They can do that in the series. They don't need to have a second book. Out. But in the same token, after they kind of explained it a little bit more and what direction they wanted to do with it, I can understand why they put it in a second book. Um, and they did. You know, of course, everybody was making a big fuss that you know he's in every other book besides. So why you know. Which they did say he was, you know, they're going to cut down his appearances in other titles. So, um, which I think was a smart move. Um, I don't like seeing too much of any character. Um, I'll try it. I definitely will. Um, after after getting more information about it and seeing in what direction they wanted to do and how it is different than the direction of what they wanted to take the current book in, um, 
that's why they didn't want to veer off. You know, they didn't want to stop what was already being set up and such, and then just throwing this in there. So after hearing that, I was kind of like, well, you know, I'd be interested in seeing what they do with it and how it all pays out. I know you and I had talked about that before, is if, you know, if they do it right, it can be very cool. If he just comes out and starts blurting all this stuff out and, and you learn all this stuff right away, where's the fun in that? So if they play it out and, and you as the, the reader get to learn all this stuff, even though he already knows it, it makes it a fun read and a fun journey for the reader. So, so far, that's what's happening, and uh, it's really cool. So I'm hoping it's, I hope it stays. I just want to give uh, two shout-outs to two podcasts that celebrated their 50th episodes. Uh, one of them is uh, Paul French's Poptopia podcast, and the other one is Chris, his uh, Altcast podcast. Um, they both uh, are fans of the show, listeners of the show, um, and they do things other than comics. Chris does more about uh, you know, movies and music, and he also really touches on stuff like dealing with uh, Canadian politics and current events and things like that. And uh, Paul French, which, which we're actually going to branch into, I think. Aren't we? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul French is, you know, talks about at Poptopia talks about movies and and more movies and TV and comics and things like that. So. Uh, congratulations to them. And I'll put links up uh, to their show on the show notes. And also, Chris at Collected Comics Library just recently had his 50th episode as well. And uh, he did just start a thread on the forum called Ask Chris. So if you have any questions uh, that about trades or hardcovers or anything, uh, find that thread and post them there, and Chris will do his best to answer. He's got some really good inside sources, especially at DC and... Uh, with the guys who are responsible for collected editions. So uh, he he generally knows what's coming down the pike long before we ever hear about it on <coughs> Newsarama or anything like that. So Cool. We know what the showcase is coming out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, much at do it. one hour and 27 minutes, that's probably long enough. Um, uh, a big thanks to... Uh, Emily for joining us and the Frag Dolls and uh, look for them at a convention near you. And also I want to thank uh, Brad and Frank for sponsoring this episode, just showing a little uh, loyalty to the show. That's pretty cool. Um, if you would like to send us an email, it's comicgeekspeak at gmail.com and our website is comicgeekspeak.com. Uh, thanks to upallnightgaming.com for hosting the website. Uh, please vote for us at Podcast Alley. It's now February, and uh, we need to start over. So uh, we had uh, 200 votes last month, so let's see if we can't break that this month. Uh, if you want to get a T-shirt, we have a bunch on our website that are available. And... Uh, as usual, we're brought to you in conjunction with WorldFamousComics.com, your spot on the Internet for the best comic book and entertainment-related columns, contests, features, reviews, news, resources, and more. And as always, we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes, one listener at a time. <laughs>